Some of the hadiths give a description of what Muhammad looked like. Will you tell us? We are repeatedly told by Arabists that Muhammad was born in the light of recent history, implying full knowledge of him. Wrong, wrong, wrong. In fact, we know less about Muhammad who was allegedly born circa 570 AD than our knowledge of Abraham circa 2300 BC, Alexander the Great circa 356 BC or Julius Caesar of circa 100 BC. His early life and his life in general were not documented because the Arabs of his days were steeped in ignorance, superstition and illiteracy with very little knowledge of writing or even the materials to use thereof. Nomadic or semi-nomadic people cannot create a civilization, especially in an arid and desolate land such as found in the Arabian desert. So-called believers and unbelievers, be aware that the only, and I repeat, the only stories that we have handed down to humanity are the one-sided, unsubstantiated, uncorroborated, inauthentic, and unrecorded oral traditions that were concocted by the tens of thousands over a period of 300 years after Muhammad's death. All that we have emanates from the self-serving Islamic sources, invariably legendary, mythical, and contradictory, none of which are primary or even secondary. There are no written documents on paper, stone or hide, that recorded anything to do with a man called Muhammad, Ahmad or Al Amin in the whole of 900,000 square miles of Arabia. The Muhammadan traditions have absolutely no idea when he was born. All we have in them is that he was born in the year of the elephant without any actual date given. Since he was not born to one of the important families of the Quraysh, we should not be surprised at all for the total lack of any facts about his date of birth or the progress of his childhood. We, of course, have an enormous number of invented and regurgitated stories, mostly miraculous, about Muhammad's birth, childhood, manhood, and characteristics. Although Muhammad in his Quran repeatedly and clearly asserted that he was only an ordinary and fallible human being, albeit inspired by Allah, it is amazing and intellectually incomprehensible how his later followers over the subsequent three centuries attributed to him, among other stunning characteristics, the dogma of sinlessness called Isma, contrary to their Quran that asserts otherwise. His attributes are comparable to those given to Allah. Merciful, compassionate, generous, forgiving, brave, truthful, loyal, loving, trustworthy, genius, prophetic, just, moral, etc., etc. Muhammad is, in the indoctrinated and uninquisitive minds of his followers, the most perfect male being that was ever created, rivaling Jesus by leaps and bounds. They have actually dehumanized him and are now, with our knowledge of the facts, are paying a very heavy price. So-called believers and unbelievers, please note that the impeccability of Muhammad is based upon a different foundation than the Christian concept of the sinlessness of Jesus. Muhammad's impeccability is asserted for the purpose of establishing the validity of his revelations only, his Qur'an. Jesus' sinlessness, on the other hand, is the corollary of the affirmation of his divinity. As all of you, our listeners, have found out through 205 chapters so far, Muhammad was actually the exact opposite of what his followers metamorphosed him to be. He was, as we have repeatedly and clearly demonstrated, a compulsive liar, a serial rapist and sexual predator, a coward, a psychopathic, hate-mongering aggressor, a pathological deceiver and betrayer of trust, a creature who was totally devoid of any mercy or compassion and a megalomaniac to boot. We have addressed and proven each and every which one of the above characteristics based entirely upon the very Arabic of the Quran, hadith and tradition passed on to us by his followers. Ladies and gentlemen, the very first complete biography of Muhammad was actually put on paper at least 150 years after his death by the incredible Ibn Ishaq in his monumental and detailed Sirat Rasulullah or the life of the Messenger of Allah as translated by Alfred Guillaume. In fact, this book, which is available, 
should be a must read by any of you who wants to know in detail Muhammad's demonic characteristics passed on to us not by an enemy of Muhammad or Islam, but in Arabic by one of his most ardent and loyal followers. So much so that many modern Muhammadan apologists try to do their best to cast him as a liar or untrustworthy. The usual accusations made by Muhammadans whenever one is telling the truth or facts about Muhammad's unsavory characteristics. Also, be very aware of the fact that out of almost one million hadiths collected by Bukhari and Muslim and Tirmidhi hadiths, not even 10,000 are considered authentic or sahih. It is unfortunately in such a disgusting degree of mendacity and deception of Muhammad's alleged traditions that 1.4 billion of his followers base their faith into and extol so much actually leave a lot to be desired. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 5791 narrated by Ali ibn Abu Talib. When Ali described the Prophet, he said he was neither very tall nor excessively short, but was a man of medium size. He had neither very curly nor flowing hair, but a mixture of both. He was not obese. He did not have a very round face, but it was so to some extent. He was reddish white. He had wide black eyes and long eyelashes. He had protruding joints and shoulder blades. He was not hairy, but had some hair on his chest. And the palms of his hands and his feet were calloused. When he walked, he raised his feet as though he were walking on a slope. When he turned around, he turned completely. Between his shoulders was the seal of prophecy, and he was the seal of the prophets. He had a finer chest than anyone else, was truer in utterance than anyone else, had the gentlest nature and the noblest tribe. Those who saw him suddenly stood in awe of him, and those who shared his acquaintanceship loved him. Those who described him said they had never seen anyone like him before or since. If you Google Muhammad's characteristics, you will read the most astounding attributes about Muhammad that were ever bestowed on any human being in recorded history. I shall read from one of their sites without referencing the sources so as not to interrupt the avalanche and cascades of attributes regaling Muhammad, although we have each and every one of these references available. Bismillah, assalamu alaikum. The following is the description of the physical characteristics and attributes of the best of creation, our most beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He had the most radiant coloring, deep black eyes which were wide set and had a sort of red tint to them, long eyelashes, a bright complexion, an aquiline nose and a gap between his front teeth. His face was round with a wide brow and he had a thick beard which reached his chest. His chest and abdomen were of equal size. He was broad-chested with broad shoulders. He had large bones, large arms, thick palms and soles, long fingers, fair skin and fine hair from the chest to the navel. He was neither tall nor short, but between the two. In spite of that, no tall person who walked with the Prophet seemed taller than him. His hair was neither curly nor straight. When he laughed and his blessed teeth showed, it was like a flash of lightning, or they seemed as white as hailstones. When he spoke, it was like light issuing from between his teeth. He had a well-formed neck, neither broad nor fat. He had a compact body which was not fleshy. Abu Huraira said, I have not seen anything more beautiful than the Messenger of Allah. It was as if the sun was shining in his face. When he laughed, it reflected on the wall. In her description, Umm Abad said, From afar, he was the most beautiful of people, and close up, he was the most handsome. Ibn Abi Halala said, His face shone like the full moon. At the end of his description, Ali said, Anyone who saw him suddenly was filled with awe of him. Those who kept his company loved him. All who described him said, They had not seen anything like him either before or since. Rasulullah was so clean, clear, beautiful, and handsome. His senses were exceedingly powerful. He could hear from a long way off and see further than anyone. In essence, he had a body formed in perfection and uniqueness and blessed. Anyone suddenly seeing him would be consumed with love, 
and anyone speaking with him would feel great love in his heart and soul. The wise respected him in accordance with their degree. He greatly honored his relatives. He would not, however, treat them better than those more worthy than them. He was generous, beneficial, compassionate, forgiving, brave, and mild. In speech, he kept to his word. In essence, his excellent morality, sharp powers of reasoning were greater than those of all other people and worthy of great praise. Dear listeners, I cannot continue without becoming sick from such an obscene degree of psychophantic attributes, especially since we all know the facts that prove him to be otherwise. <laughs>